time of Kathleen. I do feel pressure, pressure, pressure. Strange, strange, curious, curious. I've stopped something bad from happening, something bad. I have a weapon, a weapon, a weapon. I'm a Kathleen. Something bad. I have a weapon, weapon. It would be a lie, a lie, a lie. I have a weapon, a weapon. These are the true stories of real cases and the psychics who help investigators solve their most baffling mysteries. from a delivery man in the area. He came across a vehicle uh, that was off the side of the road. When he looked inside, he saw a badly injured woman on the inside, and he called it in as a traffic accident. Very shortly after arrival, the, uh, the initial officer or deputy on the scene um, immediately identified that this was not a traffic crash. There was no damage to the vehicle. No shattered glass. There was nothing about the vehicle that indicated that it had been in a traffic crash. The deceased woman was identified as Kathleen Torowski. It was obvious to us that Kathleen's body had been staged or moved. And it definitely had been relocated. If she had been killed in that vehicle, the blood in the car would have displayed a significant amount of blood cast off and spatter within the vehicle, all over the roof, the side windows, all throughout the interior of the vehicle, none of which was present. There's not even any blood splatters. And police are shocked when they find a baffling piece of evidence just down the road from where Twarovski's body was found. There was a handwritten note that said, I was here, but now I'm gone, and you know the rest. The mysterious note is sent for analysis. Police have to determine if it's a message from the killer. Kathleen was removed from the scene and taken back to the coroner's office uh, for a medical uh, examination. The coroner determines that Twarovski was killed the night before she was found. By looking at Kathleen's wounds, it appeared that she had been struck with something that was slender and very strong. At the autopsy, we took toxicology samples. We also took samples of her hair and fingernails so that later on down the road, if we found a suspect or a weapon, we would be able to do further testing and hopefully match them. After looking at the wounds, we felt that a lot of force was used in this beating on Kathleen and that it was probably a male who did this to her. Detective Chris Pandre begins the search for possible witnesses. One of the first things we did during the investigation was to reconstruct what happened up to Kathy Tarowski's death. What she did the night before, who was she with? Where did she go? We canvassed the area. We talked to as many friends of hers as we could possibly locate. And that included, of course, her parents. We spoke to Mrs. Tarowski, and she related to us that Kathy, the previous night, had gone out with a friend named Carol. We spoke to Carol, and she advised us that Kathleen never showed up where they were supposed to meet. Do you have any idea where she might have gone or who she'd be with? and she didn't know where she was that night. So that particular lead led us nowhere, and we began to speak to other friends again. Under Sheriff Gene Lowry joins the investigation. 
He questions Tarofsky's ex-fiance, John Cumby. John Cumby was currently following a firefighter EMT occupation. Cumby characterized his relationship with Kathleen Tarofsky as, as positive, that they were friends, and that they were still close friends. When we asked John about his whereabouts and what he was doing, he had indicated to us that he was alone at home during the course of the evening. The investigation is one week old, and detectives have no suspects. I said they missed them by a few minutes. They're desperate for anything that will lead them to Twarovsky's killer. I don't know. I they've been bringing them in their DOC drags. I first heard about Noreen Rainier when I went to a blood spatter school down in Orlando, Florida back in the early 80s and Noreen was one of the presenters for the class and I was very impressed by what she did for us. Psychic Noreen Rainier has been helping police solve cases for 30 years. I was very impressed by Noreen and when we seemed to hit a dead end thought maybe we should call her. I was skeptical to say the least. We would have People who are claimed to be psychics would call in information, and for the most part, uh, it didn't prove to be very valuable. I needed to call it into a police case as a last resort when all other police avenues have closed or come to a dead end. Rainier asks police to send her some of Kathy Twarovsky's personal effects. I like to touch something that was on the person when he or she was killed. Then I can relive the scene of the crime and tell them what happened. into the murderer I could see that he had seen dead people before that he had been around death before are police on the hunt for a serial killer Marine would go between the victim and the perpetrator and actually in, in a sense become that person I'm picking up the killer now I, I want to be the killer body was moved that someone took me to where I was found but I was dead when they took me there we spoke to Noreen uh, she was right on the money Kathleen's body definitely had been relocated I want to be him I want to be him the weapon, the weapon, the weapon, the weapon. I feel metal, long, metal, 
object. More than two feet long. I could see the murder weapon. I knew it was heavy, and it was either metal or iron or something, something heavy. The coroner's report confirms that Rainier is right about the murder weapon. The weapon that Noreen described to us was consistent with the wounds that we found at the time of the autopsy. When we looked at the wounds on Kathleen Tawarski's head and face, it was clear that it was caused by some type of hard, blunt object. When we spoke to Noreen, it was almost like coming into focus. It made it, made it much clearer to us. It's like an affirmation. Investigators ask the psychic if she can see anything about where the attack took place. I see some kind of structure, and I see wood and stone in the structure. Stone, uh, stone, uh, fireplace, fireplace. I'm gonna leave the weapon there, there, there. The psychic tells police that the attack happened in front of a stone fireplace, but whose? Lowry still doesn't know where Twarovski was the night she was killed. We were looking at some of Kathleen's social hangouts, some of the clubs, taverns and other places she might go to try and document her whereabouts and to corroborate some of the information we were receiving from witnesses. Anytime that she's been in here recently where there's been any unusual incidents or acts of violence? Not that I'm aware of. Every place we went to find out if the account she was providing could be corroborated. Every door we opened had to be closed because she had never been there that evening. So it always brought us back to the same point. But then the investigation takes a dramatic turn. The note found at the crime scene comes back from analysis. This note appeared to be written by a woman. Is there a woman involved in Twarovski's murder? A note discovered near Kathy Twarovski's body appears to have been written by a woman. But all along, investigators have been looking for a man. Are they on the wrong track? We looked at the handwriting. The handwriting seemed to be a feminine origin and did not seem to be consistent with anyone associated with the victim. It didn't have anything that identified the victim. By name, similarity in handwriting, it didn't have any of that. We looked at the location of the note, and the, the note was found a considerable distance from where the victim's remains were located. I didn't believe that it was in any way related to this crime scene or affiliated with this investigation. The note is dismissed. The case grows colder with each passing day. We were very unsure that we could bring this case to a successful conclusion. Police are desperate for any kind of lead. They invite psychic Noreen Rainier to headquarters. Noreen, the reason we asked you for the second session was to go over some of the points that you had brought out initially. I know she had some valuable input at the onset of this, and we just wanted to bounce some more things off of her. Noreen, could you tell us anything about the vehicle type or the murder weapon itself? I was initially skeptical because I had never dealt with a psychic before. I try to go in a little bit deeper to actually see the crime scene and what happened and give them more information to help them. I want to be him. I want to go back and be him. Vehicle, vehicle, vehicle. It has a telephone or a CB, government or state. It's not fancy, but I feel official in some capacity. That rage, he's been trying to control that rage. 
He was pulling away, pulling away, and this man needed her too much. I don't want her to leave me. She's not going to leave me. Why are you doing this? She's the only woman I want. She's the one I want, and she's not leaving me. She haunts him all the time. Haunts him all the time. I knew the killer uh, knew Kathy. He, he wasn't a stranger. She had heard or betrayed him in some way, and he didn't want her to leave him. Uh, he wasn't going to let her leave him. I felt like he was either had a government or a state, some sort of official job, but not, not high up. It was like a bolt of lightning uh, out of the sky. It was so on target. The detectives know exactly whom she's describing. This is really important. Uh, what I do Psychic is... Noreen Rainier has described Kathy Twarovsky's killer. When I became the murderer, I just felt this tremendous rage inside of him. I, I felt that he thought well, Kathy was trying to pull away from him, and he wasn't going to have that. But I did feel the rage was just amazingly strong. It's sort of like... Uh, Based on some of the information Noreen was giving us, it, it was clear that she was, she was directing us to John Comby. The psychic's description of the killer can mean only one thing. Twarovski was killed by her former lover, John Cumby. When she talked about his type of employment, it, it fit together with him being an EMT firefighter and a former police officer. I knew that the killer knew Kathy. I knew that uh, or felt that she had betrayed or hurt him, was going to leave him, and he was very jealous and possessive. John Cumby was extremely obsessed with Kathy and very possessive of her. He didn't want her seeing other people. He, he made it clear to her that, that she was a possession. I was thinking, wow, well, she's right there. She's right here. Could she be right again? And when she was consistently right, her credibility went way up. Police closed in on Cumby and obtained a search warrant for his home. But when we went to execute the search warrant at John Cumby's home, I looked through the living room window. I saw this fairly large fireplace, a stone-like fireplace. It fit hand in glove. And then seeing the fireplace poker, it's kind of hard to describe the feeling. It was just, you knew it. You just saw it, and it, it, it all fit. It all came together. Police return the next night when Cumby is home and search for evidence. We took the fireplace poker because it was very consistent with the injuries that were displayed. We believe the murder weapon was the fireplace poker because of the unusual wounds on Kathleen Tarowski's uh, face and skull. Matched the unusual curvature of the fireplace poker. The broom had several items of evidence on it that were really key to this investigation, but the most important one was hair fragments. And more specifically, that hair had been forcibly removed, not in the normal way that someone would in a home, but with a blunt object. It proved to be key. The crime lab discovered on the broom Kathleen Tarowski's hair, or what they felt was consistent with Kathleen Tarowski's hair. I feel a night that Kathleen Tarowski went to John Cumby's house. She was going to break up with him for good. And he wasn't going to let that happen. Police have enough evidence to arrest Cumby and charge him with killing Kathleen Twarovsky. John Cumby was given a life sentence without parole for murder. Considering that Noreen was not briefed about what we knew about the case, she was very accurate on, about the crime scene, uh, John Cumby's personality, and the type of weapon that was used. The information Noreen gave us was valuable in this case. 
I felt the experience was positive, and under certain circumstances, I'd look to use her again. My bottom line is to help them, but I feel like I'm part of a team, and I want to give them so much information. I want to help. When you think about the power of the human mind and how little of it we use, uh, if we ignore that opportunity, that expertise, we're not going to win.